All right, so this track is about IPFS implementations. Uh, to open the track, I'm going to give a quick um, preview of the track. I'm going to talk a little bit about history of IPFS implementations, and I'm going to talk about ideas for, for new implementations. So this is that track. Um, the goal of this track is for each pre presentation to give you a sense of that IPFS implementation. It is meant to be a pitch for the implementation to prospective users, contributors, and so on. Think of these presentations to, as to be listed on a website for those implementations. Each talk um, may cover what the implementation is for, the problems it solves, the solutions it offers, how it works, what the architecture is, um, some interesting challenges along the way in building it, uh, who the team is building it, the traction so far, the usage, the roadmap towards the future, and maybe pain points that, that the implementation ran into or that it's trying to solve or that it looks to solve in the future. Uh, so here's a, a preview of the track. We're going to um, go speak about implementations at a high level. Um, we're going to hear uh, from Dietrich about lessons for putting IPFS in weird places. We're going to hear from Adin about Kubo, the um, OG implementation. Uh, we're going to hear from Lytle about IPFS gateways, uh, and also from Lytle, Lytle about IPFS Companion, IPFS Desktop, and Brave. Um, we're going to hear from Xpeed uh, about, and Mateus, Matthews, Matthias, about um, WinFS. Am I pronouncing it right? Yeah. It's a great name, by the way. WinFS is awesome. Um, then we're going to hear from B5 about IRO. Uh, quick question, is it about general IRO? Uncle Iro, awesome. Uh, deadly poison, or uh, what was it? Beautiful flower, or deadly poison? Delectable tea, or deadly poison? Uh, had to like search my dag store. Um, then we're going to hear from Hector about IPFS cluster. Then um, I'm going to talk a bit about Filecoin as an IPFS implementation or as an IPFS system. Uh, we're going to hear from Ayush about Lotus, and um, which I think is the IPFS implementation that handles the largest volumes of data. Uh, then we'll hear from Michael about web scale IPFS. Um, then from uh, Jay Loglin, I think, is that pronouncing it right? Great. About Estuary, another large implementation for large data. Uh, we'll hear from Corey about IPFS operator, um, a Kubernetes um, uh, tooling. Uh, then from Daniel about Ospinner. Is that correct? Ospinner? Yes, maybe Daniel here. Yes. Um, then we'll hear from Gus about libIPFS, an upcoming library with components for building IPFS implementations. Then from Aching Brain about JS IPFS. And perhaps we'll hear about a new name. Maybe yes, maybe not. Uh, maybe you'll get to vote on a new name. I don't know. No promises. Uh, we'll hear from Alari about Aqua, uh, a language for building decentralized protocols and how we might be able to use it to build IPFS itself. And then we'll hear from Yanopoulos about Piergos, the private file system. Um, great. So lots of amazing things. Um, this track is going to move fast. Again, 15 minutes only. Um, if you have questions, I recommend you drop them on Slack uh, and then ask them at the end if there's time. If you want to go talk about it right after, then like just leave the room in as the speakers are changing or at the next break if it seems too disruptive, um, and use the on-conference track to, to host discussions. Um, either way, all of this kind of um, fire hose information is going to percolate through your brains, and you're going to talk a lot about it in the hallway tracks, at dinner, and in all subsequent tracks. Um, I'll dive through a quick history of IPFS implementations, uh, abridged. So this is not a, um, a, a, a full history, but um, the first set of implementation, implementations came around 2014, 15. Uh, I started with Go IPFS and JS IPFS. Um, we had a web UI very early on. We had a daemon and a gateway, and we had like the, the kind of end-to-end -end model for how an HTTP client would, would be able to use um, an IPFS node. Then after that, we had started getting bind API bindings and implementations in other languages. A few other implementations uh, started to appear, things like Pi, IPFS, C++ IPFS, and so on. Um, but I think none of them quite made it. Um, then we got things like IPFS Companion, uh, which uh, 
managed to bridge the experience with browsers. Then we got desktop to make the web UI packaging much e nicer. Then we got cluster, um, a way to kind of coordinate large numbers of um, IPFS nodes. Uh, then we got tools like IPGET, which were like kind of very lightweight uh, implementations. There were a lot of other tools like that, so this is just one. Then we got a whole slew of new gateways. So many other groups and organizations started hosting their own versions of gateways using the, the traditional gateway code, sometimes patching it, sometimes adding new features, and so on. Um, uh, many early pinning services and uh, groups like Cloudflare and so on um, deploy their own gateways. Then we got like the gateway checker, like some tool to check you know that there are uh, how the gateways are doing. Um, then there were a whole set of um, applications and application systems that started blending in with IPFS, ways of um, dealing, modeling the data and moving around the data and so on. Um, things like the, the the tooling that kind of went into the the, the browser. So, for example, um, special libraries that got shipped with Opera or Brave. Um, in Brave's example case, we have Go IPFS. Uh, then we got things like PeerGhost and Textile and Query and many other applications in the first um, first waves. Uh, then we got a lot of pinning services. Um, several pinning ser services appeared, um, notably groups like Pinata and Infura. Um, then we got um, uh, much more sophisticated um, systems for um, doing everything, uh, like doing the things that go, uh, that uh, UnixFS hoped and aspired to do. So WinFS came in to actually address a lot of the things that um, were sort of left out of, of UnixFS um, and to bring capabilities and encryption and and, um, and those models. I guess PeerGhost all, um, also had the crypt tree. So PeerGhost and WinFS and, and other fission um, systems use the crypt tree and, and other encryption tooling. Um, then, um, I don't know if at this time or another, point in time in the future was when UCANs came about, and UCANs are really cool. Uh, I think they're going to percolate through all of our infra the way that um, CID is, uh, CID is percolated. Uh, then we got systems like Fleek, um, which started building like super easy to use web front end style deployment tooling um, and hooked it up to things like DNS and ENS and so on. Uh, then we had um, finally uh, shipped implementations of mobile um, implementations like Birdie and, and so on. And along the way, uh, probably earlier than this point, things like ceramic and um, like next generation of textile and so on uh, started uh, evolving the data model. And that's when, when sort of IPLD started flourishing as a system. And we got many different codecs like DAG Jose and DAG Cose and like a, a lot of others. Um, and that paved the ground for Autocodec, which we'll hear about in, on Friday. And uh, along the way, we also got a bunch of larger scale um, data systems, mostly around um, blockchain networks, so like Filecoin and others. Uh, there's a number of other um, blockchain systems that I think primarily use Kubo, um, but, but in some cases, I think they have forked it. Um, Filecoin ended up implementing a, a different version um, of a lot of the same systems. Um, because the tooling ended up being very different, like syncing a blockchain and, and building a blockchain from scratch using all, all the CDS and so on, um, just looked like a very different problem than, than what Kubo was solving. Uh, so we got Lotus and Venus and Friends. Uh, then we got Estuary as a way to like bridge. The, Lotus and Friends ended up so far away from Kubo, and that, that interop between those seemed extremely difficult. I think even today, they don't quite interop, uh, which is the, the bane of our existence. Um, and we're getting things like Estuary and other systems to um, help bridge those gaps. And both Kubo and Lotus and Friends are getting closer and closer to each other. Um, and along the way, we also got things like IPFS Elastic Provider, which is a, a new implementation of, um, of an IPFS system for large cloud systems. Uh, then we got things like Utico, which is kind of abstracting out Lotus to be able to build many different kinds of blockchains. Or, many different kinds of consensus systems. Um, you, you'll hear more about Utico later in the week. It might be a good uh, system to build IPFS implementations with. Uh, and I think th this doesn't quite um, work yet, um, but we're getting Saturn soon, which is a CDN style IPFS node, which is kind of like a tiny gateway. Um, but imagine a, a double-ended gateway where you just kind of stack a bunch of little gateways on top of each other, and you can do uh, standard HTTP traffic through them, or grasping traffic. 
Uh, cool. So this is a, I'm sure that I forgot a ton of tools, So, but this is a view into a lot of the implementations. You're going to hear about a number of these. You're going to hear about the challenges they solved. You're going to hear about the challenges they currently have and want to solve, um, and so on. So um, a few months ago, I kind of described this notion that um, uh, when, you, when you look back at, at HTTP, HTTP evolved by first having a single implementation, HTTPD, which then kind of started getting patched. Um, and later, that evolved into an, a set of new implementations. Uh, but the really big breakthrough came when um, HTTP clients stopped being daemons and separate systems that kind of built the whole thing end to end, but had explored the surface area and had warped the, the application domain enough that they could actually become very small, lightweight libraries to be included into programming language runtimes. Um, and that's when the web really exploded. It's when um, you got all kinds of um, application systems that were able to embed web functionality um, in, in all kinds of applications. But you couldn't quite do this. I don't think you could have ever done something like this um, before those layers in between. Uh, so I think we're kind of headed in the same direction. So we had GoIPFS and JSIPFS at the beginning. Um, then we had uh, you know, a set of like different um, versions of those systems to tune them for different applications. Then we got like totally different implementations of, of the same set of ideas. Um, and I think the, the big breakthrough here is going to be Wasm. Uh, or that's what I would bet. Could be totally wrong. Could be a different thing. Um, but I think getting to the point where you can have a very lightweight um, IPFS thing coupled to Wasm, and you can start embedding it in libraries and programming language runtimes and deploying it in the same way that you can deploy HTTP clients or HTTP servers, um, I think is where, where the future is. Uh, and it remains to be seen whether Lip2P will be able to work in this environment um, or, or whether IPFS will need to like, just work over whatever transport exists, whether that's IPFS or, sorry, HTTP or, or something else. Um, so yeah, I encourage you to like, spend some time this week thinking about this problem, because I think that's where, where uh, some of the future lies. Uh, so some ideas for new implementations. Um, IPFS and Wasm, already kind of beating the horse. Um, it, you could imagine a very simple implementation that's kind of like Node or Deno, which just has a Wasm runtime and code loading by CID. Just think of that as a very simple implementation. If you have dynamic linking by CID, you can have modules that then load all implementation, all the rest of an implementation out of a library uh, or out of, out of packages. So you could ship an IPFS implementation that is just that little runtime with code loading and a standard library of some packages. You can pull out all the network transports you need, all the file system abstractions you need, um, everything else. So that you could end up with a super portable runtime that could work in extremely low power environments too. Uh, you could have things like a hypervisor with VM workers. Uh, so think of like Wasm lambdas or, or JS lambdas and containers and VMs and so on. All of this um, content addressed and snapshotted so you can take the state of the program at, at any point in time. You could think, think of IPFS over HTTP. So you can like get and put IPFS over CIDs um, or, or the car files. I think this actually works already today, but I don't know if it's been like canonicalized or blessed anywhere. But I think a bunch of tools already effectively do this. We could have a Rust implementation for mobile. Uh, I think most of the groups that have been trying to do mobile so far have been doing it with Go. It is very difficult. Um, Go is not a great language for mobile yet. Um, we could try TinyGo, uh, which is a, an embedded systems oriented thing, but it's not as mature. Um, and so I think this is where a Rust implementation dedicated for mobile could make a huge, huge impact. Um, something that I've been thinking about for the last couple of years is, um, could we do something like a decentralized secure version of software-defined networking in peer-to-peer. -peer. Could, like, software-defined networking totally change the networking world by making it dramatically easier to, to orchestrate massive scale networks. So could you do something like that in this environment and make it secure and make it safe and make it so that you can write a program and you can reason about what's supposed to run where um, so that it doesn't kind of give too much power to some, some party? Or if you can't do that, then just make it in, inside of a single trust domain. So if you have maybe sprinkle UCANs through the SDN language and then enable kind of like very permission capability oriented software defined networking. Something like that I think could be super, super powerful. Um, then we can think of 
IPFS and LibPP written in a programming language designed for distributed systems like Aqua. Uh, we'll hear more about that today. Um, we could then start thinking about like services and nodes and so on that are part of the network that are not necessarily full client clients or, or, or application servers. Things that are meant to be part of the network and, and serve some uh, purpose, like indexers. Uh, so think of very large scale indexers, like 100 terabyte to 10 petabyte scale um, content routers. You could take those full things and replicate them around the world and offer really low latency um, content address uh, delivery. Um, and you could have, basically, if you, if you get these like full replicas around the world, you could do routing in you know, 10 to 20 milliseconds, uh, as opposed to you know, currently today, we do like hundreds of milliseconds to, to several seconds. Uh, we could also think about building indexers or content routers as actual proper internet backbone routers. Like you can think of deploying some implementation to the OSs that internet routers use or to FPGAs directly. Um, what it would look like to, could we, could we just do that now? Could you start building content routers out of those systems and get some like um, super fast, uh, well scaling system? Um, could you do IPFS with remote operations like UCANs for auth and so on? Maybe you can already and maybe WinFS already does this. Uh, we'll, we'll hear more later. Um, could you do things like um, use Utico, like this consensus engine, this hierarchical consensus engine to create services like pinning services and name services and indexers and so on? Um, could you start blending zero knowledge proofs into IPFS? Could you start like reasoning about some of the computation, some of the um, routing operations or some of the selector operations and so on? Um, could you start carrying proofs as part of like returning a selector? Oh, you asked for this whole selector? Here it is, and here's the proof that that's the correct thing. Um, we have zero knowledge proofs now, so maybe that's possible. Um, oh yeah, double double that up. Yeah, it's good to like write in distributed systems uh, languages 